Hang on, let me give you the blankie. Hello, welcome to Viral Love Diary. How are you? I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. Louie's right over here, can you see him? Hang on. <laughs> my buddy. You looking for some place to sit? Okay, I'm gonna move over. Okay, then good? We am getting the lamp? Okay. <sighs> I've been meaning to do this project for a crazy long time. And it does require just a momentary setup, a verbal setup, so you understand what's going on. So in our head of household bathroom, which is the one that John and I share, obviously, because we're the heads of the household, we have one of those showers that it does not have a tub and it has two shower doors and they go like this, okay? So you can't get in in the middle you have to get in on one end or the other. And what we have discovered during our marriage is that John likes to get in on one side and come out on the other, and I get in and out on the same side. And it is almost 45 inches long, so I know this is a crazy long story, but we haven't been able to find a bath mat that will cover the whole basically the whole distance and we have one now that's 33 inches long so what happens is there's like six inches on either side basically that is not covered and the ends are where you have to get in and out also because john gets in on one side and out on the other he always moves the bath mat where he's going to get out and then when i'm going to get out on the other side it's moved over here and it seems like what's the big deal just move it over which i have been doing for five years but i figured hey you know wish there was somebody who who could like weave us a bath mat that was a custom size. That's me. I can weave a bath mat that's custom size. So that's what we're gonna do today. I did not take pictures because I'm authentic enough to tell you that that part of our bathroom floor doesn't get cleaned enough, but I'm not authentic enough to show it to you. You have to be one of my very best friends for me to show you those housekeeping things that I forget. And yes, I do have some very good friends that we do share when we discover a housekeeping thing that we haven't kept up on. We'll be like, look at this, this is crazy. Because it makes us all feel better, but you know, I'm not really sure I'm ready to put that on YouTube. But I, I am ready to say I'm not a very good housekeeper. So, you know, we're almost there. I'm gonna weave this on my rigid heddle loom. I'm gonna pull up loops on every third row, show you how to lock it in. So it's gonna be like, kind of like a ginormous terry cloth, sort of. I think they call this loop and pile, and that's the style I'm gonna use to weave this. It needs to be approximately 45 inches long, and I'm thinking that it's gonna shrink off the loom by 10%, but then also, because it's all cotton, when I wash it, it's gonna shrink another, I'm guessing, 10%. So I'm gonna use the Weevolution calculator, which I will link below, to figure out how long my warp needs to be and how long I need to weave the weft before I cut it off. Couple quick things you do need to know. I'm gonna use plain white worsted um, peaches and cream for my warp because that's gonna be like the bottom of it, if you know what I'm saying. You're not really, you're, you're gonna be able to see it, but it's not gonna be the main event. So that's number one, and I was able to get a whole cone of this. You can't get at my store that's close to me that carries this, you can't get just like every color in a cone. So this is one I could get, and I figured it goes with everything. You know, it's nice luxury bathroom feeling. The warp will be with this, and then I'm gonna weave about two to three, probably three inches on either end of a much thinner, an 8-2 cotton for the weft so that I can turn it under twice and sew it on my sewing machine and it will have less bulk. You'll see it when I'm doing it, but I just wanna tell you ahead of time. And then for the weft, the real weft of the actual mat, I'm gonna use these two. This is called Limeade, I think. Yeah, this is called Limeade. Oh gosh, it's so bright. Oh, there we go. You can see it. So I haven't painted this bathroom yet. In this house, we've painted every room except the bathrooms and part of the living room, only because I've had a hard time picking a color for the living room and I needed to paint the ceiling first. 
which still needs one more coat. This is how I do things, okay? The reason I'm using this color is actually because we have another bathroom where the guest towels, all the pretty towels, are these two colors, the white and the kind of limey green. And I figured if it doesn't work in our bathroom, it will definitely work in that bathroom. So it's perfect, right? Let's warp the loom. I'm going to use my warping bar and I'll also put the stats up as far as how long the warp came out after I calculated it and all that kind of stuff. So let's get weaving. I haven't woven on my rigid head of loom since before I got COVID. So I'm kind of excited to get it going. Let's go. Okay, I'm just gonna screw down the top of the bar. This traps the ends so they cannot move while you're rolling. Also, this is kind of different for me. I learned from one of you guys that I can leave the pegs in while I roll this, and that way, no matter what is going on with the different widths of the yarn, it will never be able to move at all because it's already looped on all the pegs. I highly recommend this method and if you do use it, just make sure you use a really good, smooth, tough warp separator like the Mylar. That'll cover all the pegs and prevent them from poking through and creating any kind of tension problems. So I know it's hard to believe, but you can see that's like a nice smooth roll. Now you pretty much know all my secrets. This whole warp took 20 minutes start to finish to get on this loom. And I swear it's all because of this warping bar and the mylar. Here I've got my warp all lashed on and I'm just adjusting the tension so that it's even all the way across. My three inches of hem is already woven with 8-2 white cotton and you can see I did not even use any waist yarn at the beginning because it's going to be trapped inside the hem and I do this all the time. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you guys. I know it's unconventional but... It's the Trish way. Just getting started, I wove a couple of picks of plain weave with the main yarn. So 
So I'm about to show how to pick up the loops. I used some knitting needles for this. I started with dowels and did not like how they did not go through smoothly into the yarn. And the first four inches, I just picked up a loop every other opening. I wanted to see two different textures. And then when I finished the first four inches, I actually started to pick up a loop on every opening. I wanted to see two different textures and then the intention was to go ahead and do the last four inches with the every other loop and I just forgot. So that never happened but I am still really happy that I did so I could see what both textures looked like. So I used three knitting needles and they overlap a little bit. They're each eight inch knitting needles. They overlap a little and then I use one of my little dollar store combs, you guys have seen them in other videos, to go ahead and beat that in just like this and then did two picks of plain weave to just lock it in. All right. Please excuse the llama pajamas. So <laughs> this is what the texture looks like. I'm gonna try and get it so you can see it. I guess you can see. Um, I'm, I'm packing it really tight because I'm concerned that when I wash it, this is gonna even out instead of keep the loops in it and it, if it does I'll be okay with it but I'm kind of hoping that it won't I mean I'll still be able to use it it'll still absorb a lot of water and be really good as a bath mat but um this is making it like a little more absorbent you know it's just a lot more cotton yarn and I like it but I'm worried about that. So I'm packing it really tight in the hopes that when I take it off the loom, it'll spring back even more and hold those threads in there. I don't, I'm just not sure what's gonna happen. Here, let me see. Oh, see, you can really see it well if I come down like this. You can really see the texture. But I'm afraid it's not gonna stay. So here you can see there is a really drastic difference in how it looks when I start picking up every loop instead of every other. So I'm totally done weaving, but I wanted to give you guys some specs. It's 155 ends, um, warp ends. I wove three inches of the 8-2 cotton for weft, and then 50 inches of the loops, and another three inches. This is what I'm gonna use for my hem on the end. And it's seven and a half ends per inch, and this is worsted weight. I said this is A2, I think I got everything. So let's cut it off, I'm actually pretty excited. I brought my machine out because I'm so crammed into my studio right now. I'm just gonna get her threaded up. First thing we're gonna do is zigzag over just the very ends. That's just to keep it more stable, like just the actual 
very beginning of the weaving, which is right here. I'm gonna start just by zigzagging over that. I've got my machine at the widest zigzag and the almost finest, one step up from the finest um, like level of satin stitch, I guess. So I'm gonna do the other end. So I can see my zigzag and I'm gonna cut just a little bit, probably a quarter inch from the zigzag. Now I'm going to just go ahead and roll these without ironing them, but if you feel more comfortable, you can totally iron them and hem them. I am gonna use some of the little clips though, just little clip plastic clips. I think I paid like $5 for 100, and I use them when I attach things when I'm um, knitting and sewing them together. Okay, so what I'm doing on here is about three quarters of an inch is going over, and then I'm doubling it up right up to the edge of my worsted weight cotton. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like all the way down. Up against the cotton, it's gonna make a really nice hem. I'm gonna switch it to a straight stitch on my machine and I'm gonna stitch right up close to the roll, probably as close as I can get to a quarter inch from this roll that's up next to the main body of the mat. So this is what my edge is gonna look like on the matte side. See, this is the side with the loops. And this is what it looks like on the back. So it's looking really nice. I'm gonna do the other side and then get my courage together to put this in the wash. <laughs> the mat is in the washing machine. And I thought I would just tell you guys that some of you are gonna probably think I'm crazy for putting time and effort into something and not really being sure how it's gonna come out at the end. But here's the thing, even if it comes out crazy and it just doesn't work out, I will have learned a lot and it's it's worthwhile. So it's nothing to, it's not the end of the world, it's just a bunch of yarn. And it wasn't even very expensive yarn at that. I mean, I've said it before and I really mean this, I'm just putting my sewing stuff away. Um, Every step on your success journey isn't gonna look like success. And it's okay to make mistakes and have things not turn out perfect. And it's so easy to let yourself be scared to try something because it might not come out perfect, but it's really a procrastination technique. It's a fear of failure technique. And it isn't really good for any of us. Like nobody got to be magical by being scared something might tur not turn out. You've got to like go for it and just assume that you might fail you're just testing and it then you'll just try again i mean i am worried that it's not going to come out and i'm also worried that it's going to shrink too much because i have a lot of shrink factors and i didn't do a test run and i tried to mitigate one of the shrink factors so it's very hard to predict <laughs> if it's going to fit in the space but I just went for it and I hope you guys will be brave enough to go for it. If I can just go for it and then put it on YouTube for anybody to see me fail and fall down, which I might be doing right now while the washing machine's running, I don't even know. But if I can do that, then you can too, right? Whatever it is that you're afraid to try because you might not be able to do it, just try, it's fine. If you don't do it the first time, you try again, it's cool. 
it happens to everybody. It happens to all the successful people. I might be falling on my face right now, but it's okay. I have finished this project. Sorry if I'm echoing, but you know I'm in a bathroom. And it is the perfect size for our shower, but I don't love how this part looks. So I'm gonna do a new one that is <laughs> solid color. <laughs> Okay, you good? Okay. All right. <laughs> so cute. And so even though I don't love this as much, it is perfect in this bathroom. This is a guest bathroom. And our towels, hang on, let me show you the guest towels with it. These are the guest towels that I figured would go perfectly if I wasn't in love with it for our bathroom, which is all wonderful. It's perfect in here, it's going in here. I did learn some things which I feel are totally worth sharing. So this is my hem that I showed you how I wove and then how I finished it. And I absolutely love this hem. I think it's perfect for this and the thickness is perfect. I will definitely use that hem again. Oh, look, I forgot to trim a string. We'll just tuck it under. Okay, so also at the beginning, I tried a different texture. The first, I think it was like six inches of weaving and I meant to do it on the other end and completely forgot, but it's fine. Um, what I think I'm gonna do is just hem this so that it's gone. But what I have discovered is that I absolutely love this texture for a bath mat. I think maybe more even than the loop. So I think ours is gonna be made in this texture for with a solid yarn. Sometimes your mistakes teach you as much as your successes or more. And I mean, when I stand up here, you can see how that different texture looks. And even with this different color, this variegated yarn, you can see how that different texture looks. I just like it better. So I think that's what ours will be. But I do like this. I love being able to make it a custom size and shape. I am gonna keep it in the guest bathroom. It's perfect in here. Thanks for weaving a bath mat for my guest room with me. I appreciate you guys and I will see you soon. Thanks, I love you, bye.